Hello, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I will add my two cents in the recent controversy about web component. And this controversy was sparked by uh, the recent article that was written by Ryan Caniato about web components, stating that web components are not the future. But before we dive in into the article that we, he wrote, let us remind ourselves about what web components, what they are. So web component uh, is a set of different technologies, but mainly uh, it, it gives three things, the use of custom element. And with custom element, you can create uh, custom tags, uh, like tags like user avatar, maybe for, for a component uh, that's displayed a user avatar. Uh, you can also think about tags like maybe uh, custom, custom footer. So we can think about custom element as it increases the semantic of the web. That's the way I think about custom element. It gives more, uh, more meaning uh, to the template uh, that is written. And then also we have the shadow dome. Uh, the, sh the shadow dome is encapsulating uh, the styles of the, of the web components so that if this web component is used at different places, there is no collision. Uh, between them and then also we have the html templates so with custom element we have new tags like template and slot uh, for reusability so if you just even forget about uh, the this this current controversy about web component what they are what they aren't uh, and we should just look at the aim of, of web component we can see that web component uh the objective is to make the web easier for developers but also to make it more maintainable, but also for, for the users who are, will be consuming uh, this application, they will have web applications that are more, uh, more performant and to make really uh, the, the web better than what it is today. So that th with this objective clear in mind, now, now let's just head to the article that was uh, written by Ryan Kanyatu about web components. Uh, they are not the future of the web. So he, he started his article talking about maybe an article that he, he already wrote in the past. I'm going to read this article, but I just wanted to finish this one first. And after reading this article, I was like, okay, now that I have his opinion about what web components are, I didn't even feel like reading this article. Maybe I will read it in the future just to have, to have a glimpse of uh, what he thought in the past and why he feels that web components today are still not the future. So he felt like what he wrote uh, seven years ago uh, is still uh, the, the same thing happening for web uh, component. And you know, he starts his, his argument saying that web component are competing standards. Uh, so if web component, they, they, are, they arrive, then web component will just be a conflicting, uh, uh, conflicting technology maybe against React, Angular, Vue, and you name it. Is it really the case? Uh, because web component, they don't aim at replacing web frameworks that we do have today. Web component, they don't aim at replacing Angular, they don't aim at replacing React, Vue.js, and so on. Rather, web component, they aim at providing the building block that all these web frameworks uh, they can use. So the way I listen about it is like, today we have signals, and signals it started maybe with SolidJS, and now Signal has evolved to be maybe a building block for different web framework. So that's the same way I, I view a web component. So web component, uh, if, it, if it's standardized, then every framework could just use it and then build the framework on top of that. And the, the implementation can differ from one uh, framework to the other. But the interface that it will provide, this one will remain the same across different frameworks. So that's the way personally I view web components. So I don't think that web component, they are competing standards against the web framework that we do have today. And you know, he has an argument about GSX saying that uh, GSX, they don't have a standard, but who will dare to say that GSX, they need standard in order for them, in order for it to, uh, to be um, a highly used, a highly performing technology. For me, reading this argument, it feels like he's saying standards are wrong. 
But if you just look around the world around us, standards are everywhere. The, the only difference here we, within the web framework is that uh, the standards are arriving uh, a posteriori. Uh, they are not, the standards are not designed before the implementation. These standards are arriving after the implementation of these different web frameworks. So that's why maybe he, had in, he has in mind the fact that maybe at uh, these web uh, standards, they would just constrain what the web is already doing today and then even prevent uh, inno inno innovation within the web space. Is it really the case? Well, we'll just come back uh, to that uh, later. But then the, the, his uh, and, uh, and, uh, other argument is about uh, the cost that it will, uh, uh, the cost that it will, it will take to implement web framework within all the different uh, framework. While it's true, it's true that it requires uh, a cost uh, to have to implement web frameworks within the different frameworks because, okay, these frameworks, they are already working, they are already used by, by millions of applications today, they are running well. But what about the future? What about the maintainability? What about the cross-platform? Maybe that are using several of these frameworks. Are we thinking about all this? And it's true that there is there is a cost in implement, implementing web framework within uh, in implementing a web, a web component within uh, the different uh, framework of the web that we do have today. But does not the benefit of our way the the cost that it might take to implement this web web component. Uh, true, true, there is a cost, but if we think about the long-term benefit, both for those implementing framework, for the developers using this framework, and also for the end users consuming the application being written, I think that if we think about all that, the cost he's talking about here doesn't make too much sense uh, for me. So, I will come back to, uh, to to this article, but you know, let me just oppose this article that Ryan Kanyato he wrote against uh, this uh, article here. That for me, this article really uh, it has the gist of what I think about web component, and also he also has uh, it, it, it has the my opinion about the article that Ryan Kanyato he wrote, and. He 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 started his article clearly by showing that you know Ran Kanato he he just went against uh, all the initiatives that are done to make the work the the web uh, better than what it is today, and for me standards uh, you know we are just we are just talking about the web but if you just talk about what other parts of life standards they are made really to in order to provide a building block that everyone can just consume. So just saying that, you know, standards are for the web, they're just bad. I feel like he's, he's just discarding uh, all the work that is being put in making the web better than what we have uh, today. Uh, and then, Rank, so he, he, say, he, 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 he says directly uh, that web component, okay, they are not the future but they are the present. Now, because web components, they are already used uh, in several frameworks. Uh, Angular also rely heavily about web component. Microsoft also, they, they are making heavily changes from their React component to using more web component. That way they can use natively what the, wor the web is offering. So web component, they are not the future. They are already the present. Uh, because and we can just imagine that web component will be more and more consumed uh, in the future. And and then also also I, I love this part of this uh, this article which try to really try to make the word component clear. What do we talk about when we talk about component? Because we talk about component when we write. Um, web application within Angular, within React, we talk about component, and then also here we are talking about web component. So what is the difference? Well, web component, they are a superset of component. Uh, in other words, 
a component within an Angular application or a component within a React application, uh, it can it can be a web component. But the other the other way is not true. Like a web component cannot be a component uh, within uh, an, a framework. Well, at the moment, React doesn't use a web component. But I'm just in thinking about the future. So if we think about the future, all these different frameworks that we do have today, they could all leverage uh, the, the, the web component in providing uh, application that we've been using more natively features that the web does offer. So he's trying to d differentiate between what components are from what uh, web component they are. So as I was saying, so a custom element uh, is different from a component, but a custom a custom element, they are a subset of component uh, because uh, component, they will use this custom element uh, to do uh, the job that they are doing uh, today. Uh, and it's, it's one of the arguments that um, Haran Khan, he's, uh, he's saying is that, he's saying that the, the work today is, is great because people, they have been able to, to think about different scenarios and try to solve it with different technologies. And he's saying that the, the, the web is working great. And as such, uh, we need not to have standards that will prevent uh, this innovation that are already done uh, within the web space. But it's true what he is saying. But what about the future? Uh, what about the inter interoperability between all these different frameworks? Uh, today we hear more and more about micro front end and why within the micro front end we have different uh, technologies with different frameworks that can be used. So could we, if we could just think about web component that could just be create once and could be reused in different places, would not be that would not, that not be solving the problem for everyone. Uh, so it's true there is a cause for the abstraction, but if you do think about the long term goals, for me this this cause of abstraction that he is talking about here, uh, it really uh, doesn't have. Uh, his place. Yeah, and then he just goes on and talking about again uh, this uh, this real cost of web component. So for me, let me just head head to again to this uh, to this article again. And one of the points that I really like in this uh, article in this illustration about the Model T uh, of of Ford, and he says that the cheapest car today will outperform the Model T. Uh, in every way, uh, uh, even if, even if Model T was great in the past, but today the cheapest car will outperform it because of what? Because of all the standards that have been defined along the way. So, what is the point of this illustration in this conversation that I'm having here today? The point is, you know, maybe web components are not at their best today, but if everyone just sit down around the table and try to give his constructive feedback about how and why mm -hmm. web component could be improved, then the web component that we will have tomorrow, they will far outperform every uh, framework that we do have today. So the criticism of Ryan Kanyatu about web component doesn't have its place. Rather, it should point to where the web components are failing and how the web component they could be improved. For me, that's the, the right direction about web component because web component, they are not a threat to the peaceful proprietary way of life of frameworks. Uh, rather, they aim at making uh, the life of everyone, both developers and users and maintainers of web framework to aim to make their life easier. And, and I, I, I know that some they, they don't see things that way, but for me, this article about uh, Web Component written uh, by Ryan Kanyato, for me, is just, let me say, uh, a biased opinion uh, from a framework uh, maintainer, a uh, framework author. I think he's biased because he's thinking more in terms of He's solid GS that he wrote, 
And it's true, storage is, I've never used it, uh, but from what I see, uh, it's a great framework. Uh, but for me, his article is just a biased opinion for, from someone who has his own uh, framework he, that he tries to popularize. And thinking globally about web components and discarding all the effort that have been done uh, to make web components uh, a better uh, technology that all frameworks that could benefit from. Yeah, I think that discarding all that effort is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of a shame uh, if, if I'm, I'm to say it that way. So for me, realistically, realistically, he needs to rethink about his own opinion about web framework. Maybe try, maybe to encompass maybe the idea of even using web company within his own uh, framework, SolidJS. And maybe then, if web component do not solve the, the approach, maybe he can just try to contribute uh, in the discussion about how to improve uh, web framework. So for me, in conclusion about this article, I say that is a biased opinion uh, of someone who developed uh, his own uh, framework. And uh, on the other side, I would say that for me, web component uh, is true. Maybe they, they are not solving all the problems that currently web frameworks uh, they are facing. But the next generation of frameworks that will leverage the web component, this next generation, they will take into consideration all the feedback that web components have taken uh, to improve uh, the technology. Uh, because it's just an, a, a cycle. You know, web component today, they are just a technology in progress. And as this web component become better, all this next generation of framework that we use uh, web component, you can just imagine them just outshining all the frameworks that we do have uh, today. So, you know, he, he says it beautifully here that longevity supersede ingenuity. When we write web application software, it's not only a matter of it works today. It's also a matter of how it will work in the future. And, and that's what matters. And this one, as he says here, is supersede ingenuity. It's not about how much, we, how much innovation there is the technology that we are offering, but it's also about the, the bigger community, uh, how everyone will be able to use it, how will it interface with all the different technologies that are existing. So that's what makes uh, the web uh, a place where standards, they need to be there. And personally, I think that web framework is definitely the way to go. So if you have your, also your two cents in this recent controversy about web component, please do not hesitate to let me know in the comment below. And uh, I'd be really happy to see what you have uh, in mind uh, against of, for the article that was written and uh, how, what, what do you think uh, will be the future of web component? So hope you like uh, this, this video and uh, don't hesitate to let me know what you think about at the format of my videos until the next time for a new video.